All right, um, hopefully you can hear me. Um, I guess this is the beginning of the marathon this weekend. Uh, it's gonna be a long one, so um, hopefully you enjoy it. In the first run, we have Floa coming up with um, any, a, a heart percent, I think, of Sky Sword. So um, hopefully you guys will enjoy that. If there are any questions or anything, just speak to the people with the SAL t-shirt and you should be fine. Anyways, enjoy the run. Alright, uh, seems like we are live. Um, hi, my name is Floa, and I have the pleasure of opening this little marathon here today uh, with the Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. Um, as you can see, I have two empty files and one not so empty file. This is a hero mode file. Why I'm gonna be using a hero mode file, I'm gonna be explaining it a little bit. So, um, As you can see, I'm going to skip some cutscenes. Very important because otherwise we'd be stuck in the intro for like 10 minutes or so. And since we want to go right into the action, we can start like this. All 
died. Uh, you may see I'm playing on the Japanese version. That is because the Japanese version has much faster text. Um, the text difference in an actual any percent run is about 9 minutes uh, to the English version. So, yeah. Right. I'm gonna go through this little tutorial in the beginning. Just gonna explain everything to us. And uh, yeah. We're explaining how we can jump and stuff, but we don't need any explanation. Uh, yeah, we're gonna need to press no to a lot of explanations so in the game. But, alright. Alright, how do you start a good marathon? Exactly, by jumping down from a bridge. Cause... Well... Why wouldn't you jump from a bridge? That sounds kinda wrong, but who cares? Link is done with life. He's just jumping off the bridge. Uh, there you can see another difference why I'm uh, why I'm in hero mode. I'm taking double damage. In normal mode, I would only take one hard damage from jumping down the bridge. Um, uh, would you please jump down? Thank you. And yeah, in hero mode I take two hearts. That is because in hero mode I take double damage. So what I'm now gonna do is I press continue, and while I press continue, I press the reset button on my Wii. And this puts me in back in time. This is a little bit weird to describe. So back in time. Uh, why I continue the game and at the same time reset the game. The game wants to put me on the title screen. But since I also press continue, uh, it's gonna put me... Uh, that's wrong, huh? It puts me on this playable version of the title screen. And in back in time, I can do a lot of shenanigans. And I already did something wrong. That's bad. Uh, I can fix this though. Okay, so if I delete this file and save it at the same time... It gives me this weird file. Uh, what that's gonna do... I'm gonna explain later. First, I'm gonna do what is called a bit save. This puts me in this unloaded version of Skyloft. Uh, this has the advantage that this gate is open. And that gate is open too. So now I can just get the Skyward Sword. gonna press uh, now I'm gonna skip a more some more cutscenes I may be a little bit broken okay, can I open this? okay and then we're gonna leave again uh, I could theoretically already place the tablet in here, but the thing is, if I would place the tablet in here, it would softlock me, because I have not rescued my loft wing yet, and I can't rescue it anymore after I place, after I place the tablet. So yeah, we gotta do that. And now, once we have our sword, we can just continue. What do we need to escape Skyloft? Exactly, we need to rescue our Lock Wing. Alright. Before we rescue. 
Okay, I love wing. We're gonna do something else though. We do not want to talk to this guy. We want to talk to these guys. Okay. So now we know our love queen is in danger and stuff the flaw. And we kind of already know where it is. So let's get there. Now that we actually have a sword. Not gonna be a problem here. So we just need to enter this waterfall cave. Um, maybe I can say the reason why I was confused earlier and copied the file to the wrong slot is because uh, that was any percent muscle memory. Uh, yeah, the route between any percent and half percent is a slight change. And one of these changes is that you copy the file to another slot. Um, I could theoretically also have done it with that slot, but uh, it's easier if you do it that way. So now we are Zola talking to us, explaining all the stuff we already know. And yeah, as I said already in the beginning, I don't want to spoil too much, but I'm gonna be breaking the game pretty much. And I don't mean bonking there. Now we skip some more cutscenes. Alright, and now we have successfully rescued our lock wing. Okay, we're in this great tutorial now. Zelda is gonna explain to us all of the things about how to fly Loftwing and stuff, but... Well. Okay, this is just an auto-scroller, basically. What I like to do is I like to spin the camera here a little bit. Just to see if the audience is still awake. Now I'm going to do save and quit here. Okay, now we have this corrupt file. And the thing with this corrupt file is all values on this file are zero, including our health. So we can easily just die. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna perform the back in time again. This is done by continuing and resetting the game. If you want to try that yourself, uh, it's very easy. You just have to continue and press uh, reset immediately after that. Not hard. Okay, what I did now is called Bit Magic. And uh, this allows me to open these gates. So now I'm gonna be performing a bit save again. Okay, now I can go back to the goddess statue. 
only need to place the tablet. Alright, so now we have placed the tablet, now we can leave Skyloft. After a few more cutscenes. So in the beginning you already see that this game is very cutscene heavy and very text heavy. So, uh, yeah. The Japanese version saves a lot of time over the English version just by text. There aren't any exclusive uh, tricks or glitches in this version, it's just the text saves so much time. Alright, now we're gonna get the adventure pouch. This is actually gonna be useful. <laughs> Could theoretically also skip it, but it's not done. Because skipping it would lose you more time than actually uh, than actually getting it. Okay, now I'm gonna get a shield. If I equip the shield here, then Fai is not gonna suggest me buying a shield here. She's just saying, oh, there's a hole in the clouds now. Great. And yeah, if I would not have the shield equipped, Fai would tell me, would be one text box more to tell me that I should go and buy a shield or something like that. Alright, and now we're off Skyloft. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna skip a small cutscene from Fai by just jumping off my loft wing. If I would go too, uh, too near that uh, light pillar, then Fai would tell me something about, oh hey, you can jump off there. But since we already know that, we can just skip that cutscene by jumping off earlier and just flying there ourselves. Alright. Alright, people who know the game uh, may, may actually think now, wait, didn't you skip an item now or two? And yes, I skipped uh, uh, actually a very important key item. That is the sailcloth. This one. Um, unfortunately, the game doesn't give it to us. First, I want to not take damage from these Deku Babas. Okay, that's good. Because if we had to say cloth, I could actually. Uh, slow down our fall here but since we don't have it I can't slow down our fall so yeah we gotta take the damage that's why you don't want to get hit by those Deku Babas if you get hit by one Deku Baba there is a small trick how you can uh, how you can avoid taking uh, taking damage on the last fall but uh, you can't avoid the damage on the first fall. So you gotta avoid at least two of those three Deku Babas. But as you saw, it's not gonna be, it's not a huge problem. 
Alright, now Fai wants to tell us about her great dowsing ability. Uh, we don't want to hear that. Unfortunately, she's still going to explain it. Because... Well, the game just thinks... Uh, hey! Do you want to know about dowsing? No? Hey! Who cares? We just got gonna explain that anyways. Alright, now we're in the seal temple. And you often see me rolling, that is because rolling is one of the fastest... Uh, rolling is one of the fastest ways to go forward. Unfortunately, it also needs the most stamina. But what few people only know or a few casual people is that the uh, stamina wheel uh, the last quarter only depletes half as fast as the other three quarters so that's why we constantly want to stay on the last quarter because it refills as fast as the other quarters so basically we get a double refill in normal time so now we're gonna get to the Hardest trick in the game, placing this beacon. Yes, it's very hard. Okay, good. I did it. First try. Nice. Okay, it's just... Uh, Impa is very picky about this beacon and if you don't place it correctly, she's, she's gonna say, No, you didn't place it correctly, place it again. And yeah, you can easily lose some time with that. <laughs> Now the game's gonna show us our great beacon. Yeah. Very great. So you don't miss it at all, because the way to that beacon is a very long and hard way. Couldn't find it without. Ah, damn it. Alright, nice. All at once. So this is one of the other advantages of Hero Mode. I already have a fully upgraded Scoured Strike. Which means I can defeat enemies uh, in one try with this. In one, with one Scoured Strike. Especially in the beginning, which is really helpful. Yeah, and this guy also wants to explain some stuff to us, which we also don't want to hear. Mm. Alright. I always say the first 20 to 30 minutes of this game are tutorial in the speedrun. Basically, until you get the slingshot. Can you skip more cutscenes here? Because nobody likes cutscenes. More enemies. Ah, uh, come on. Ah, uh, that's bad. This kick we only want to talk to us after we've defeated both of those Bokoblins. Unfortunately, he's still not very talkative. He's just running away from us. Mm. 
So yeah, now we gotta chase that Kikui. We have a lot of more cutscenes. Now we're gonna bunk some shrooms. Also very important is to take this rope down. For some reason this works. And for some even weird reason the game actually thought that you could... Uh, that you can shoot this uh, bind down early. Oh, who knows. So yeah, this kick we now tells us to find the elder, which is very well hidden. But, uh, well. You're gonna see how well hidden the elder is. So now we can just make use of the rope that we rolled down just a minute ago. And here is the elder. I know, he's very hard to see. I haven't seen him on my first playthrough either. It's very well hidden. Alright, and here we have more Bokoblins. Nah, not all at once. Usually you want to take them out all at once. Basically we get a cutscene every time we rescue the Kikwi. Uh, yeah, we gotta still save two other kickwees after this one, so... Yeah. <laughs> That's a very nice landing. I would rate it 8 out of 10. So, now we just gonna... Save... Well, that was close. Save the other kickwees. Save the kickwees, kill the animals. Or something like that. Uh, okay, good. That was the last moment. Alright, this Kikwi is very interesting. Because... Yeah, he tends to move uh, where he should not go. Yeah, usually you want to cut the grass so that, that he doesn't move at all. Unfortunately, that's not always possible. And for some reason you can roll through these crawl spaces. 
I don't know how you can, but uh, well, Link seems to know how we can do that. Now we can talk to the elder, who's gonna give us the slingshot. And I'm actually gonna show you where he is, in case you didn't see him the first time. As well hidden as he is. Look, this is the elder. I uh, know he's hidden very well. You need to tell him that without all these kiwis. Tell us that Zelda is in the deep woods. Slingshot. So now the tutorial is over. And yeah, I hope you like beeping, because there is a lot of beeping going on right now. We have the low health beeping, we have the bowsing beeping, we have the low stamina beeping, we have the item wheel beeping, we have the fire beeping. Uh, yeah. Don't worry, we won't hear that much beeping anymore. That's the maximum beeping you ever hear in the game. gonna stun this Pokoblin because he can be very annoying while others and now there's a trick coming up that is called cube warp I hope I can actually show it Okay, I need to wait for that Pokoblin to turn around. Ah, uh, that did not work. That did also not work. Because Link doesn't want to do what I want. Ah, uh, well. The Pokoblin is unfortunately very... Uh, not that much cooperative as I would like him to be. So what I could have done there is, uh, while targeting that Bokoblin, I can scout strike a goddess cube that is up there. And that goddess cube triggers a cutscene which uh, warps my position up there. How exactly that works. Uh, I can just show you. But yeah, so we have to go this walk of shame. That's a fall of shame. Wow. 
So yeah, I was just jumping down and suddenly Link is standing there. So basically if I would have triggered, uh, I would have uh, hit the scout strike from down below, I could have saved this uh, walk. Alright. More cutscenes, five suggests buying a potion or something like that. Uh, well, I mean, notes to her, we already have a potion, which is gonna be enough. Now we can just add a sky view. Alright, now that we're here, we can do a trick, a trick that we didn't do in a long time. First I need to save. Then... I need these keys to kill me. I was actually very fast. Now we're back in time. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna do bit magic again. Yeah, unfortunately I'm out of stamina. This should not happen. Now I'm gonna perform what is called a bit warp. This applies the coordinates, I just saved that in bit skyloft to, to the map I was, uh, the game was saved in. So it applies the bit skyloft coordinates to sky view. This places me where I just, uh, well, where I just loaded in. Just gonna defeat this star draw. And I'm gonna be uh, using this potion here because we have a very interesting jump here. If this Pokemon would go down, we have the spider here and we need to get past it. Yeah, this is not how you jump there. Yeah, this is why you uh, want to drink the potion there. Because sometimes you can uh, get the jump, but she actually hits you again. So, uh, yeah. And I'm gonna do safety save here. Because if I were to die now, I would respawn at the very beginning of the dungeon and I would need to do the bit warp again. So, since I don't want that, I'm gonna do that safety save.
this star falls uh, has a very easy, easy pattern. Strike attack him, and then you you strike into his uh, you strike into his swords so that he attacks you and then you shield bash him. Yeah. Are we gonna have the now we have the beetle, a very useful item. Spoiler, it's not. We'll only be using it two times. Wants to get out of here. And one more time in Earth Temple. So we only need a beetle actually, uh, if we would not get it, we would only need a beetle at one, uh, yeah, one time in a, once in a run, but unfortunately there is no other way, no other way to skip that passage, uh, to skip that passage without having the beetle, so, yeah. Oh, I actually think there is a way to skip that passage, it's just really slow. So it's faster just getting the beetle. That did not hit. Thank you. And these vines are very interesting. They have a very bad mechanic. And sometimes Link doesn't want to grab them. Yeah, vines in these games are generally very weird. Link, would you please cooperate? Thank you. Wow. Are you kidding me? back which is actually not intended to be uh, is way easier than the way uh, than the way forth so yeah the not intended way is easier than the intended way that's what I'm saying and I, and I fell down great Wow. Game really doesn't like me today. Okay. I'm gonna go the intended way if the game doesn't want me to do that. This is not the intended way. This is the intended way.
All right, now we have the first boss fight against Giraim. Why are you jumping back? You're not supposed to be jumping back. Why are you jumping back? Okay. First phase, very straightforward. Spin attack him and slash him so he doesn't jump back for some reason. Yeah, in the second phase, you don't want to have darts and you don't want to die. Okay, luckily I did a safety save earlier. Of course, this is all intended to have 6 help again. Why are you jumping back? Yeah, this is how the first phase is supposed to go. And as I said already, in the second phase you don't want to get these starts. I said you don't want to get these starts. Watching my Wiimote doesn't want as I want. Yeah, you wanna have these attacks where he's just rushing forward at you or where he's standing next to you. I said you don't wanna get darts! Hello? I said no darts. Wow, that was very early. Surprised that's a word. Okay. This is how you defeat Grim. And I'm gonna get this hard container. Oh no, I'm not gonna get it. If I would be at four hearts, I would get it. I would, I would only take the hard container for, uh, for the healing, not for the extra heart, because upcoming I need at least four hearts, or at least five hearts. Four hearts is. Not enough. I need more than four hearts. Okay, I'm gonna skip those cutscenes again. What I'm now going to do is save and quit. And I'm going to activate the corrupt file again.
And we're gonna die again. Have in the chat. Uh, that won't work because I didn't press A. Yeah. I didn't press A again. Are you kidding me? Okay. Now I press A. Yes, pressing A is very hard. Okay, and now... I want to bonk this tree with file 3. Get the seminar fruit. And be saving over file one. This is just the fast way to place the to place the light pillar. A neat side effect of this though is uh, did it actually okay it worked good and each side uh, what you can also do with this you can apply this uh, light pillar to files which don't have the ferrant pillar set so you can have a file where only the elden pillar is but not the ferrant pillar and this allows for some fun shenanigans um yeah this allows for some very fun shenanigans uh yeah if you want to know what exactly those shenanigans are, uh, I suggest you watch an any percent or an all dungeons run of this game. They are very interesting. With, uh, basically, you cannot only enter, you cannot only enter Skyloft on it with that, but you can also enter Farron a bit with that. And that allows for some whole more shenanigans. Uh, unequip the shield. Okay, the thing where I, why I did not directly die with that shoe is because dying in lava is way faster than the, or the dying animation from dying in lava is way faster than the animation from dying with that shoe <laughs> now I'm gonna be doing a bit warp again <laughs> here it matters however where I am standing because it takes the direct coordinates from where I'm standing here and applies them to the map 
where I save that, the Elden map. And what this does, it pushes me under a goddess cube. And so I land here. This is why I needed four hearts. Or more than four hearts, because I took because I took four hearts of damage there. So yeah, these Bokoblins are easily dealt with with a Scarlet Strike or two. Now I'm getting the digging mids. You could probably also skip them, but it's just, unfor unfortunately it's way slower than just getting them. Also, that's not what you do. I was just panicking there. Uh, now you didn't see it. But what you can do there is you can just place the bomb in that fire directly and you don't get damage from it. For whatever reason, nobody knows. It's just very funny to look at. Okay, more cutscenes. Hey! And now we're coming to the part why this game had such a breakthrough in summer. Why we basically scrapped off half of the run. Half of the enemy percent run. So first, I'm gonna be going all the way over Skyloft, just to sleep in a bed. Yes, sleeping is a very important. Now we're gonna be excellent. Important is that I actually have the have file three loaded while I exit, because otherwise the game would crash. Nighttime bit for some reason always crashes unless you're in an early game file. Okay, now I want to start the file and push the gravestone at the same time. And this is what is called an RBM. It is called reverse bit magic. So basically, what I'm gonna, what I just did, I applied uh, the flag that I just uh, activated uh, from pushing that stone. Is now applied to this map, to the Elder Volcano map. Uh, what this does is. You're gonna see soon what this will actually be doing. 
Uh, would you pick up the bomb? Thank you. Let's just say it, the, the RBM I just did is for something very interesting. Okay, what you're gonna see here is what is called stutter sprinting. I just don't use my full stamina. Uh, yeah, this allows me to conserve way more stamina can, than I could otherwise. Bye. These are just idiots, they are way, way too slow to realize what is happening. And this cutscene is very interesting. So these two are gonna search, are searching away into this dungeon. But they do not know where is the key. How should they get in without a key? Until they realize, hey, why don't we just dig under this, under this door? Just saying. And I'm gonna be showing you how speedrunners go through this door. This is how speedrunners go through that door. So, what just happened? Uh, the loading zone for this was activated already because uh, with the RBM that I performed earlier with the RBM I performed earlier I opened that door but unless I reload uh, unless I reload the area uh, the door is still the the door is still there. The actor chime is still there, but the loading zone is already there. So uh, yeah, basically the door was only a texture. That's what this is very nice. Just a small cutscene skip. <laughs> Uh, okay. Uh, so this keys can be very destructive. Uh, yeah, I had runs dying on that keys. Because if, th if that keys hits you when you only have one heart left, it's game over for you. Okay, that guy's down. Okay, now I can perform a, another small cutscene skip. I can trigger this fight before I enter the fight. Uh, excuse me. Um, okay. Hello? 
you. Thank you. This guy just lent us our bomb back, not realizing that there are no bombs in it. The eternal question is, how could he have those bombs without a bomb back? Nobody knows. Okay, important, I'm gonna need to save here. And then I can just die. Okay, now I'm gonna pe be performing another RBM, which skips the worst section of this dungeon. Uh, yeah. People who know this game may remember there's a big section with a boulder coming up. And yeah, this is very dumb. Okay, gonna be performing bit magic first. So now you have bit magic and uh, reverse bit magic in one bit, so to say. And reverse bit magic, that's just the exact opposite of. What, uh, yeah. What bit magic does. I would like to talk to you. Yeah. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, hmm? seven. Okay, important is I need to, I need to count the text boxes there. I need to start the file after clearing the second text box. And hey, I get the puzzle cleared sound. But... There is no puzzle to be cleared. Basically, same as the other. Is the other as just when entering the du the dungeon? Um, the actor doesn't uh, doesn't change unless you unless you reload the area, which is usually done by just dying. Okay, now I can now I just need to trigger those rocks. Now those rocks are not there anymore. What I can just do is I can start to sprint my way up here. So I don't so I can skip the puzzle of Opening the yeah of opening the rock there where I actually would need to stop. Okay, I can get the bus key. I need to run away. Yeah. 
and it's time to fight the worst boss in the game. Ah. Uh, come on. So before the fight, I'm just going to be restocking on palms. This also looks like there could be a small cutscene skip. Unfortunately, there is not. There's just this very weird cutscene where the fight just tells you about this stuff and yeah <laughs> so yeah here we have Giram again talking and talking and talking And hey, here we have Scaldera, West boss in the game. For now it it's, uh, seems to be very nice to me, but usually the eye is just going places all over. Uh, yeah. If the eye is going places all over, then... Uh, then it's basically over. Oh, nice. That was a very good Scaldera fight, actually. Okay. Oh, I want to be taking some damage again. You may ask. You only have eight minutes left to complete a complete area and a dungeon. How do you want to do that? Ha! Leave that be. That is gonna be interesting how I'm gonna be doing that.
Okay, first I'm gonna be dying again. And activating bit. Now, it is important that I copy this file on the free slot. Okay, gonna be doing bit magic again. Save this file. Um, shit, this may not work. Yeah, this does not work. Oh well. Uh, thing is, I forgot to pick up a stamina fruit, or rupee, which uh, loads the items I have in this file. Uh, why am I not on... Ah, who cares? Um, this is... Bad. Okay. Okay, I can fix this. Uh, okay. I did not want to fall down there, but okay. Okay, now I need to save this file. And I also need to pick up the stamina fruit. Ah, uh, there it is. This loads the item I have on this file uh, into back in time. So yeah, now you see I have bombs. This also loads the tablets. Yeah, now he's placing the right tablet. As soon as the camera changes, you start the file. Okay, now now this is right.
not right. For some reason, the game didn't place the tablet. Okay. Well, I guess I'm gonna have to do that manually then. Okay, the tablet isn't placed. No issue, I can do that. That's weird. Apparently I started the file too early. Okay, now we can place the tablet. Yeah, unfortunately you can lose a lot of time when you're doing uh when you're doing stuff wrong in back in time. Now I'm gonna be flying to Lanairu. Okay. Now, how to do a complete area in a little bit less than five minutes, I would say. So first, you're gonna die again. Now it is important to have the second file. Because this flag, uh, because this file has flag saved. With which I can open this door. This should not happen. Okay. It's also important to not start the fire unless you are supposed to. Now we have Batro here. Is it Batro? <laughs> or is it the file that's screaming at me? Because the file seems to be pretty angry. I don't know what I did to it. Seems to be pretty angry. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
Okay, <laughs> now I need to count again. When I press yes. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. What I need to do now is I need to commit this flag. I need to make it stick. What I can do is just uh, do this. And now I need to go back. And then you can see what is actually dead. We get the cutscene that we hit a goddess cube. Uh, yeah, usually we get that the first time after we fly back in the sky after hitting the first goddess cube. Uh, well, we never actually went in the sky though after hitting the first goddess cube, so we delayed that cutscene a little bit. All right now, I have this bird statue. She also tells me that I can fly to any bird statue I want. That I already visited. Quote unquote, visited. So yeah, this is what my RBM earlier did. It uh, basically act, uh, basically set this statue to visit it. Also, fun fact: here is the not destroyed gate of time. And also, fun fact: uh, here is a cutscene trigger. A fire talking to you. Um, of the gate of time is destroyed, and that she can't know Zelda anymore. Uh, well, I don't see a destroyed gate of time. But anyways, uh, tech get ready on time. And time. So yeah, uh, that is The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. Uh, getting the harp in a little bit more than 1 hour 20 minutes. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed the run. Um, yeah, if you already thought that this is pretty broken, then I can only suggest watch the any percent run or all dungeons or 100%. They're even more broken. So, yeah, that's it from me. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Okay, well, that was a uh, soul. Quite blow her. Next up is uh, Green Snow Dog. Doing a donut country. Let's uh, have a good one and do that.